Dear friends, I welcome all of you for this amazing and exciting webinar. Today we have an amazing moderator and an amazing presenter. Let me introduce uh, the moderator, Dr. Meenal Katarnikar. She's a professor in the Department of Philosophy, University of Mumbai since 2013. Dr. Meenal Katarnikar was a reader in Jainology in the same department from 2004 to 2013. Since July 2018, she is appointed as IC Director of the Center for Extra Moral Studies, University of Mumbai. <clears throat> Her area of specialization is epistemology, Indian philosophy, Jainism, Buddhism, in particular research methodology. She has authored three amazing books titled Recollection, Recognition and Reasoning, a study in the Jaina theory of Paroksha Pramana, another book Experiments with Love, and the third book Bansuri and Mentally Challenged. And she wrote more than 53 excellent research articles which are published in reputed international journals and renewed publications. She is nominated on the editorial boards of Paramarsha, a philosophical journal published by SPPU. She was invited as a guest editor for publishing a special volume on Paramarsha on research methodology. She has participated in several national and international seminars and conferences in India, Germany, and Greece. Interreligious dialogue, interfaith dialogues are the area of her special interest. She was invited several times to Rome and the Philippines, along with many national programs for participating in international interfaith dialogue. In this regard, she is associated with Focalare, an international organization committed to interreligious dialogue and harmony. Her wider research experience of guiding PhD and MPhil students at University of Mumbai includes 17 PhD dissertations and 15 MPhil awardees. She is associated and is active member of the spiritual organization named Anam Prem, which takes up several social projects. Thank you very much, ma'am. We are fortunate to have you. We are extremely delighted to have you with us now I give this time to moderate this session to Dr. Minal Katarnikar. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you very much, Mr. Sukumar. And it's really a joy. It is always a joy to be part of any uh, interreligious dialogue, particularly when our dear friend family, Popolare, is there in association. Our connection is quite long, and because of that, uh, I very delightedly accepted this invitation. So thank you for this invitation to all those who are uh, organizing this program. And with these words, it gives me much pleasure to introduce today's speaker, uh, Dr. Pratap Chandra Bhimi very renowned person in the context of interfaith dialogue, in particularly coming from a theological Christian background. And it's uh, my privilege to introduce uh, Dr. Pratap Chandra Bhimi, who has worked in different capacities uh, in his active professional life. He was a vice principal of Serampur College former professor also in the same college. He has worked as the vice principal in Eastern Theological College. And there only he worked as a former lecturer, reader, as well as professor. He was a principal in the College of Christian Theology, Bangladesh. He was a Senate member of Serampur College University. And he was acting registrar over there also. At present, he is a visiting professor in North India Institute of Postgraduate Theological Studies, 
and he's also distinguished visiting faculty member at Praya Institute at Prayagraj. A scholar is known by the publications and in this regard also, it gives me, that means it is my honor to talk about the publications of Dr. Dhiri. He has to credit a very renowned publications like Proliferation of Theological Institutions in India. Um, uh, uh, this, uh, this is his article in the edited volume uh, in the search for cooperation and mutual enrichment. He has written the article, Jesus, the Pedagogue, a New Testament Approach to Jesus, Pedagog Pedagogical Principles in uh, Sartre Journal, a journal of contextual theology. Uh, he has written the article, John, in South Asia Bible Commentary, a one volume commentary on the whole Bible. He has took his credit to edited books, William Carey and National Harmony, and Amidst Theologies of 21st Century, some pedagogical issues. So with such wide experience, Dr. Dine, it, it gives me uh, immense pleasure to welcome Dr. Dine to this uh, August audience. And I request Dr. Dine to start his talk. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm sure the Pradine stock will be arousing a lot of interest in audience. And therefore, we will reserve some time for a dialogue after his talk is over. So take this opportunity to interact with a committed uh, dialogue like Dr. Dine. And with these words, I welcome Dr. Dine to the audience. Thank you uh, so much, our respected honorable chairperson. Uh, and I also thank our ECC director, then all the organizations together who have organized this program. Uh, I feel honored to be one of the participants. And since I feel that people from all around the world are gathered here, I consider this a great opportunity to learn um, from one another, particularly for me uh, to learn extensively uh, today. Uh, realizing the different time zone, I want to say uh, right from good evening, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and it would suit people from all around the world. And uh, I, I think uh, this is a good forum where we can enjoy our uh, closeness. I, I have been assigned the topic, the Sarampu trial towards interfaith dialogue. Uh, just a minute, am I heard properly or I don't know? Am yes, I heard? Yes, you, you, you are properly yes, audible. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. And then is the screen uh, visible? Yes, yes. It is also properly visible. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, since it is Rampur uh, trio and uh, towards interfaith dialogue, uh, I feel that it's necessary uh, to see first uh, Rampur, uh, the legendary name, uh, uh, and we will take it in two uh, different sets. Uh, first one is history. The history of Sarampur goes back to mid 16th century when Sri Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to Mahesh, which is a part of uh, Sarampur. 
His disciple, Dhrubananda Brahmachari, in successive periods, built a shrine on the bank of river Ganges and placed in the shrine the images of Jagannath, Balaram, and Shubhadra. From him, through Kamalakar, and now his descendants are known as Adhikari, who are assigned to perform puja and other religious services. Another devotee of the Mahaprabhu, Sishra Chaudhuri, built another temple in Chatra. It is uh, not very far, about six kilometers away from Mahesh. And this temple was affected by flood in 1677, an erosion in Ganges. It was shifted in 1764 to Malpara. It is quite close. Now, during the Sarampur Kar festival, these two places are connected through the procession of the devotees on each year. Now to look at its meaning and origin. The original name of Sarampur was Sri Rampur, which means the dwelling place of Rama. Sarampur is an Englishized version of Sri Rampur, which has been reintroduced now. Sarampur was also known as Frederick Nagar to honor the Danish king, Frederick V. Now the origin of Sarampur, how Sarampur came into existence, exactly like uh, how Calcutta came in, into existence. Calcutta came into existence in um, combining three uh, villages and Sarampur, uh, came into existence, uh, bringing uh, three very small, small village uh, together. And these five are uh, Sarampur, Sripur, Akna, Gopinathpur, Mohanpur, Chatra. They constituted Sarampur under the king of Sharafuli, uh, which is the next railway station uh, after uh, Sarampur. Now, um, the thing is, if it is the uh, dwelling place of Ram, if it is the abode of Ram, how come it came into existence in Sarampur or Frederick's Nagar or Akna, Gopinathpur, Mohanpur, Chatra? And we say that uh, under this Sharafuli area, there was a devotee of Ram named Anand Rao, Anand Roy, and he was keen in establishing Rama, Ram and Sita temple wherever he liked. And this has inspired the people to name it. And then he came to this combined area of uh, Sarampur, and then he established this temple. And it is uh, just about three or four minutes walk uh, from Sarampur College. Uh, we have a temple, uh, Ram Sita temple, uh, and um, many visitors come or many students come, uh, do not notice it, but that significance is so much uh, for the name uh, Sarampur. Now, Sarampur in those days and even today was a place of temples, mosques, churches, government house, that is a governor's house, 
and uh, which is now the Sarampur Court, then Danish Tavern and Hotel, and Crown Bazaar, uh, uh, and the local people know it now as Tin Bazaar. It was also a place of different nationalities and religions. And we counted that at that time there could, could have been um, nearly seven or eight different nationalities, uh, starting from uh, Danes and then the Germans, uh, French, and because the next uh, town to Sarampur is, uh, was a French uh, colony. And then the British, the other side of River Ganges was a British. Uh, colony. So Sarampur was um, hosting these many uh, nationalities along with uh, different uh, people with different uh, religious background. Then the issue come when we are saying Sarampur trial, whether we should call Sarampur trial or Sarampur quatrain. Now, when we talk about Sarampur trio, we always mean William Carey, Joshua Marsman, and William Ward. But then, when we look at the contribution of different people, different scholars today throughout the world have put a big question mark. Why should we be satisfied with Sarampur trio? Why not Sarampur portrait? Uh, last year on William Carey's birthday, three statues of uh, Carey Marsman and Ward have been uh, placed in the college campus. And people had that murmuring, why three, why not four? But the question was, which is the fourth figure? Because there are still questions and it is coming again and again about the fourth figure. And the first preference was given to Hannah Marsman, the wife of Marsman. Enormous job she has done, enormous. Now, since Katie's wife Dorothy was not physically and mentally well. She had four children and all children were taken care of Hannah. Ward was a bachelor then. And then she was engaged along with his husband, establishing schools, going from door to door in person collecting children for these schools, stitching dresses for them, cooking for the children. She was also considered, is still considered the first woman missionary in India. She also established a school only for the girls, and it is still there. So when she was doing so much and people started doubting, had there been no Hannah Marsman, could Sampur Mission experience success? And surely the answer would be, would have been no. So now when she has done so much for the Sarampur mission, why not her name be considered for the fourth person in forming the Sarampur quartet? But then the question comes, how come Saram Carey, William Carey, his children, come to Sarampur had there been no Dr. John Thomas. It was 
the right time intervention of Dr. John Thomas in the meeting of the Baptist Missionary Society. When the Baptist Missionary Society already decided that William Carey would go to Africa as missionary. And then Dr. John Thomas entered the meeting and he said, no, no, no. He should rather go to India. This is the right place for him. And then he not only proposed his name and it was accepted, he accompanied Kerry. He became his Bangla teacher. He was the one who prepared even before Kerry some translations of the scripture, particularly Matthew, Mark, then uh, James epistle, and then little bit of uh, uh, epistle of first epistle of John. And then Kerry, after seeing that, got inspiration. And he was counting the date when I would come to that stage to prepare or to translate the scripture. And it was not so, uh, I mean, not only this much. It was John Thomas who introduced the scholars, the Indian pundits, the local pundits, the Maulavis with Kerry. And then they became friend of Kerry in the latter period. And they were the ones who helped Kerry and his family to find out the place for their residence in Sundarbans and also in Malda, the North Bengal. Then was his contribution less in the Sarampur mission? And we would say, no, no, no. He played a vital role. Then the question is, should he not then be the fourth person in the quartet? And then the whole issue became more problematic when SDL Alagari proposed that in fact, the fourth person should be the then Danish governor, Colonel Ole B. So what? Why Ole B should be here? He's a Danish, Danish one, Danish person. And our his answer is quite ready. Had there been no Cornell Oli B, there would not have been anything. They could not come and settle in Sarampur. Kerry was in Dinajpur. Marsman and Ward were trying to get some place in Sarampur, but it was under Danish, um, under Danish flag. So what Olebi did, he sheltered them and also said, feel free to invite your friend also who is away. Assure him that he and his family will be well protected in Sarampur. And then when they came, they were well, not only well protected by his intervention, they could buy a land for their house where they could build Sarampur College. Then by the intervention of the Danish government, 
Sarampur College in later period got the Dennis Charter and received the university status. So why not Cornell B be the fourth person in the quadrant? Now, when we look at these different possibilities, we would say that neither Kerry nor Joshua Marsman nor William Ward, neither of them was crazy to get any honor. They combinedly worked along with these people, Hannah Marsman, John Thomas, Cornell B. And their work was to serve the people and to serve God. And that's what they have been looking forward to and they have done it. So it is not the issue of Sarampur Trio or Sarampur Quartet, but it is the work of the Sarampur Mission. And how did they proceed and how did they work is our concern. So when we look at this Rampur mission, and we noted that in the, at the initial period, the Rampur mission started with six families and they were under one roof. The idea came from the brain of William Carey, supported by Joshua Marsman and William Ward, that they should follow the principle of the Moravian missionaries who were in Sarampur earlier, almost the same time uh, they left before the Sarampur missionaries came, BMS missionaries came, they left. And the Sarampur trio came to know how they followed the principle of brotherhood communion, a community life they had. So everything they had in common and they built their own kingdom, let me put it in a positive way, in Sarampur under one family and they named it, they named it Sarampur family, Sarampur mission. But now in course of time by the time um, 1805, Sarampur had now <clears throat> nearly nine missionaries. And the question was where to accommodate them and how to work together with nine brains. And if we look at some of the records from their uh, personal uh, communications to their relatives in England, we would discover that one or two of them were not very sober. They were sometimes behaving in a strange manner. And so, the missionaries, the earlier missionaries, that means the Sarampur trio started thinking, if we carry out this way, the nine missionaries family together, this would be a, a chaotic situation, but we cannot afford to divide, nor can we afford to stay together. So we have to stay together and for that, let us make an agreement and we should prepare a policy. So what they do, did, these three mission, these nine missionaries came together. And then these nine missionaries prepared the Sarampur form of agreement. And then, on nine point, on 11 points, they agreed. And I, I, I would just simply 
read it out. I, I would not explain because it would um, take time. Number one, human soul has infinite value and therefore it must be honored most without fail. Two, a true and proper information on the faith and practices of the people, particularly their concept of sin, salvation, holiness, worships, feasts, and songs must be acquired in order to have meaningful conversations with them. Third, it was necessary to cultivate humility in words and expression like the Moravians and to become all things to all men like Paul, giving up any habits that would increase others' prejudice against the gospel. Four, realizing the shortness of human life and significance of experiencing salvation, one has to behave well with others and think of common good in sharing the good news of life through conversations in villages and towns. Five, to be perseverant in preaching the atoning death of Jesus on the cross, which is the source of eternal joy. And this joy should be the foundation of every conversation with the people. Six, the missionaries should have the patience to listen to the complaints of the local citizens and provide them the passionate, unbiased, and accurate solutions through which they might gain and grow in confidence with the missionaries. Seven, attempts must be made to see that the listeners become spiritual, that is, continue to retain their faith in Jesus, laborious, that is, grow in the habit of industry, obedient, that is, responsible to the civil authorities, honoring women, that is, behavioral respect for female citizens, whether daughter or mother, and mentally strong, become protective against all evil temptations. Eight, local talents and gifts must be explored, nurtured, and directed towards the greater goal for the benefit of the gospel and for the service of God, particularly in building local congregations and their systematic nurture, retaining altogether the original names of these new entrants to the fellowship of Christ and allowing them to understand within their practice what is evil and gradually to come out of its grip. Nine, translating the scripture into Indian languages and opening free schools for the children must be given priority. 10, regular self-sanctification through prayer and upholding committed Christian exemplary life before the Lord and the people becomes a must for every follower of Christ in general and the Christian missionaries in particular. And 11, knowing that the life of every missionary is from and for God, they should be prepared to declare that nothing, <clears throat> sorry, even the clothes they wear, <clears throat> belong to them, but to God. <clears throat> and therefore, they should be committed not to store up anything of their own or for their families. This would keep them away from worldly tension, quarrels, jealousy, and misunderstanding. <clears throat> At the end of this agreement, which was signed by all the nine missionaries, the mode of operating 
this agreement was also stated clearly that is this agreement would be read at all three annual meetings that is on the first sunday of every january may and october now you have to see the understanding dialogue and since all of you are more than qualified to define uh, dialogue but from the uh, procedures from their procedures and uh, for uh, out of their uh, policies uh, we could uh, finalize uh, this dialogue is a part of communication a means of knowing each other a process of establishing relationship with others a method of expressing one's feelings and commitment an attempt of assessing oneself an opportunity of humbling oneself before others a unique mode of repentance and a divine sanction of forming a human society to live together in peace and in harmony and then interfaith dialogue interfaith dialogue attempts at addressing first the issues relating to one's faith exploring its hidden strength and weaknesses helping its followers coming out of its prejudices motivating one to see others with clear eyes creating patience to listen to others in love and enthuse all to be proactive in forming an interfaith community of all where hatred and jealousy take back seat in other words interfaith dialogue in interfaith dialogue there is no room for envious attitude hidden or exposed no spirit of competition in any form no excess of humility and obedience rather an atmosphere where everyone can breathe at ease and help others to do so in case there is any obstacle so we come to the first one william carey 1761 to 1834 and i want to put it like this dialogue defined even when he started his journey from england towards india on june 13 1793 he started learning people's local language bangla and as i said his teacher was dr john thomas a physician of the east india company he learned local language and thereby their culture and religious practices he learned from the pandits and molavis religious norms and respected do's and don'ts he engaged host host of hindu and islamic scholars for teaching in schools and possibly in translation work it is not possibly it is genuinely certainly then he used translation as method of communication and dialogue and so long we have been contemplating only that translating the scriptures and uh, other uh, books on science western science uh, was only um, 
his um, he has the passion, but behind the passion, he had a different motive. Then he focused all through financial independence, cooperation, respecting each other, and sharing feelings with each other. And then he maintained writings, particularly newspapers and journals as means of proactive communication. And just here, I would like to say that uh, his, um, uh, both newspaper and journals, uh, towards the end, he um, made it in bilingual, uh, English and Bangla. And there uh, he opened uh, the provision for people uh, to uh, raise questions, um, raise issues, and then on the next issue, he would be responding uh, to those uh, questions and issues. And that is the way uh, these newspapers and journals became uh, so uh, lively in, in those days. Then we come to uh, Joshua Marsman, 1768 to 1837. I put it, dialogue designed. No, um, he had the passion um, to learn to know others and about others. And this motivated him uh, because of at times going with um, Hannah Marsman to different families and also while he was working with the other um, people in his uh, schools in assisting him. So he had the passion to know more about others, the culture, the traditions, the festivals, and more so the language. And therefore, for him personally, he developed his principles. And to him, behavior and attitude of the missionaries, including him, and he started with him, should be ideal in the pattern of the Indian norm and culture. And we feel that he attempted to put the finger at the right spot. Two, they, that is the missionaries, should have the patience to listen to the complaints of the local citizens, be it of any nature and or from any root. Three, they should learn for themselves to become kind, upright, and impartial in case the local citizens approach them for any advice. Four, they ought to honor the local government and become obedient to the authority. Five, they should see and explore the hidden gifts or talents the local citizens have. And if found, the possessors should be encouraged to cultivate it for people's good. Six, if required, the local citizens may be considered to undertake their job, that is the missionary's job, including preaching and administration. And the missionaries must be of such nature that the local citizens would be able to repose their confidence in them. Then we see the uh, one practical uh, aspects and um, I put it as a practical and this is uh, something uh, very uh, thrilling I could say. Now, um, 
visitors to Sarampur College would always take a round to other churches, the cemeteries, the temples, and then where temples where um, uh, the trio, uh, particularly William Carey, uh, spent time uh, to know more about the religion and about the religious scripture. But this one is quite uh, surprising and educating. And this has been uh, noted uh, by uh, his son, uh, John Clark Marsman, uh, even uh, immediate after his death because he was uh, the witness. Now the, what we call today as Kerry Symmetry has a very long and significant history. That Kerry Symmetry was purchased on October 3, 1803. Because the trio held now that so many people are there who profess Christian faith, who are attending churches. But what would happen if they die, if and when they die? And therefore, they agreed to buy a piece of land and they purchased. And today, not today, it is uh, for a long time, it has been known as Kerry Symmetry because Kerry, Marsman, and Ward uh, were also uh, buried there. Now, what happened? Purchasing of this land was on October 3. But on October 7, a recent convert, let me use that word, from Sudra background died, named Gokul, not Goko, Gokul. Then when he died, William Carey was in Calcutta because he was teaching at the Fort William College. And William Ward was on his way to Dinajpur. No way to contact these two. So the responsibility fell on Joshua Marsman. And with Marsman was Felix Carey the eldest son of uh, William Carey. So Marsman thought about it and he knew that it is sensitive as long as it is a matter of burial because William Carey has experienced it when his son, Peter, died in Dinajpur and he shared his experiences with his colleagues. And so Marsman was prepared for any eventuality. So what he did, he gathered people, particularly those who have come to their Christian faith and known Christian faith, and also some the local residents in the house of at the house of Krishna Prasad, that is also uh, a new uh, newly uh, entrant in the uh, Christian faith, and who was a Brahmin. So all these people gathered in his premises, and then the coffin box was uh, prepared. And then 
marksman stretch his hand to lift up the coffin immediately felix carey also joined and then bhairab a baptized brahmin came forward to join hands and then piru a baptized mohammedan also came forward and four of them together joined hands picked up the coffin on their shoulders and they walked all the way through the sarampur town and went to the cemetery and by turn they dug the burial and then they buried there it's a unique thing that happened on 7th october 1803 and on this john clark marsman the son of joshua marsman wrote this procedure may be considered as having completed the abolition of caste among the native christian community and it is to be noted that in bengal among the christians there is no caste system prevalent i feel it could be from then onwards and when um uh, uh, dr mukherji was the governor of west bengal he signed haren mukherji was the governor of west bengal he passed or and he signed a bill which claimed that christians should not have any caste background after they profess christianity in their life and since that was the endorsement of what happened on october 7 1803 william ward and we say that he developed dialogue from a practical way as we said earlier that william ward had been inquisitive towards the existing religions of india he wrote the book which is still uh, very significant for the researchers the book name a review of the history literature and mythology of the hindus and that is in two volumes and he wrote in 1818 and then um we have another um incident but we will just um skip it uh, because it is um but it, of course if we skip it then his um, uh, how he developed his dialogue cannot be understood so quickly i i'll just tell it this is the uh, event in uh, dehatta uh, that is in sundarban um um near the forest in the forest um regarding a baptism um of uh, krishna prasad now before his baptism what krishna prasad did he took out his poita the sacred thread and he trampled and then he handed over to william ward and he said you take it because i am going to be baptized william ward immediately objected to that and he gave him money to buy another one and ward asserted his principle of dialogue not only to him 
but all those present there how to respect and understand each other and everybody's sentiments and faith and practices and we note that krishna prasad bought sanctified and then used it for more than 3 years till the time when another person uh, from brahmin background also accepted christ and then voluntarily took it out and said i have no identity of brahmin background now i am just one in christ and that the way they set the example now uh, we have to see how the history created quickly in sampur college and since we know it uh, i'll just quickly uh, go because it is already a uh, long time now the establishment of sampur college uh, took place on uh, july 15 1818 uh, and it started with 37 uh, students uh, 50% of which were from the local congregation the admission policy was no caste no color no country shall bar anyone from the admission into sarampur college and it is still prevalent and anyone creating any a uh, human cry about these things authority would take strong action immediately then the trial pronounced that the medium of instruction in the college would be only vernacular the college introduced three departments arts science commerce theology and then it was not it did not stop there then with the initiative of the trio and particularly uh, joshua marsman when he went to uh, denmark uh, in 1827 the danish majesty king frederick 6 handed him over the charter with the power of university given to sarampur college and this charter was retained even when entire sarampur was transferred to the british government in 1845 functioning as affiliating university for theological colleges or seminaries or institutions in india bangladesh and sri lanka sarampur college is still working and um, uh, there had been um, the record that sarampur college within bracket university has been till recently that is till the end of the last century was in the list of the ugc university grant commission but now uh, it is not there and uh, different steps have been taken and it is still in the process why it has been dropped and why it should not be uh, re entered and the issue is on then the principles that have been derived from the dialogue of the sarampur trio and uh, we could derive six principles one is from learning to 
listening listening that means we are not saying that it is only to hear but it is to listen and when we passionately listen we learn and when we learn we try to activate it and that was the principle that the sarampur trio followed number 2 from inquiring to finding inquiry is the basic instincts of every human being but after finding it if one does not implement that findings in the person's life or in the life of the surroundings that kind of learning makes no impact upon the learners and sarampur trio opened up that principle then from faith to interfaith and we have seen from all these uh, three and uh, also all the nine uh, other missionaries but the um, problem is uh, i would not say the problem uh, the mishap uh, is that uh, one after another missionaries died and first was the death of kerry's eldest son felix kerry in 1721 and then in 1723 one of the trio william ward died and then other missionaries died almost um in a very a uh, short span of life uh, uh, at a time and so three of them uh, this two of them mainly william carey um and joshua marsman and here we have to say that joshua marsman along with his wife hannah marsman was strongly working on this issue faith to interfaith and they succeeded greatly and then uh, we uh, see that from disorder to uh, order now when we look at uh, this disorder to order uh, we uh, see that uh, these three now i'm putting it uh, marsman kerry and hana marsman uh, they did not allow any chaotic situation rather they tried their best to resolve everything through dialogue and from existence to coexistence living alone living healthy living for the self is not enough and they taught these things to the others but how coexistence is necessary is a must and is possible and particularly when uh, we are uh, experiencing this uh, covid uh, 19 situation i think we all are learning a lot uh, from it and then from reforming to rebuilding so uh forming is not enough but we want to rebuild and that rebuilding responsibility uh, sarampur college has uh, taken up and uh, we all know that uh, for the last uh, 15 years or so no it's little more than that the sarampur college has introduced um the interfaith um under the uh, senet uh, curriculum and uh, to be noted that ever since 
theology uh, department started functioning religions has been one of the major courses of the sarampur college and particularly introduction to major religions and then at the postgraduate level uh, specialization and then the tribal religions uh, specialization in different uh, branches that uh, has been uh, done and so uh, uh, sarampur college is uh, still carrying out and uh, and the senate of uh, sarampur college university is working uh, very effectively towards this uh, i would uh, uh, like to quote what dr oba james uh, writes about the uh, this issue of the senate of sarampur college uh, on how it acts theological he writes theological institutions under the senate of sarampur college that is university does offer subjects that deal with the issue of interfaith reality and its concerns this is done with the aim of promoting promoting mutual understanding and respect towards each other's affirmations for promoting mutual enrichment as well as for the peaceful coexistence of all within our richly bestowed pluralistic society and or context and i think dr oba james has done the right job stating this and the finally we would uh, see what to look ahead for the 21st century and this will not uh, explain just i'll mention <clears throat> number 1 activate love in proactive way across the boundaries i would say the human made boundaries to respect each language and religion and thereby the people from any background three stand against any kind of hate campaign from any corner under any disguise four strong determination not to be carried away by any politico religious propaganda and finally uphold principles of interfaith for well being of the common mass thank you so much thank you everybody thank you is dear dr gene uh excuse it was uh, yeah. just to <laughs> please do my my uh, pronunciation would be gain gain fine line time so, so <laughs> we have oh, yes again okay thank okay. you thank you very much yeah yeah so dear dr gain uh it was wonderful uh, session very informative and uh, exploring the history of the spirit of dialogue particularly in sirampur i was reading the reactions on the chat box and uh, the audience was uh, responding to your uh, lecture uh, with such uh, revering comments today dialogue is uh, uh, very much the uh, it's it's a very popular term and many organizations uh, keep showing that they are engaged in the activity of dialogue but the genuine dialogue and the principles of the genuine dialogue are uh, very uh,
simple as well as difficult. And you explored how the commitment to the dialogue needs the actual efforts of the people. We can theoretically speak a lot about dialogue, give a lot of glorification of the activity of dialogue. But unless there are committed members to the dialogue who work for in this direction uh, with their genuine commitment, the success of dialogue is not possible. And particularly with the institute like Serampur College University, where this activity is taking place at a very institutional and academic level that is commendable. I'm sure the audience would have uh, some, uh, uh, some kind of uh, requirement to have interaction with you. So we can take one or two uh, questions, very quick questions. Uh, thank yes. you very much for your comment, but uh, I have not come across any uh, question yet. No, uh, no, not I, question in the chat uh, box. I thank, I thank all uh, those who have uh, responded. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Dr. Mingung, uh, uh, yes, uh, and then uh, uh, young boy, yes, we uh, we are seeing each other after many many years. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, and I think uh, I I came here to learn um, more uh, so that uh, it can be useful for my uh, life. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Doctor Gail, and thanks for a very wonderful session. I also take this opportunity to thank organizers for uh, choosing me to be a moderator. I learned a lot from Dr. Gain uh, about the Serampur trio. Uh, and I was not uh, aware of this uh, connection of Sri Ram to Serampur. Generally, for the history of Sri Ram, we always go to North India and Ayodhya. But this connection of <laughs> Sri Ram to Serampur was uh, quite unknown to me. So that was a great uh, addition to my knowledge. And uh, thank you all the Popolare family as well as uh, the other organizers uh, who had organized this meeting. Thank you very much. And I, uh, I hand it over to uh, Sukumarji. Thank you very much. Professor Meenal Katarnikar for moderating in an excellent way. Thanks to Professor Gain for exploring amazing hidden treasures of the historiography. It's a fantastic, it's a stunning presentation. Thank you very much on behalf of all of us, sir. Thank you. I Thank hand you over so this much. time to our Deputy Director, Tangan Lun Vaipe. Uh, once again, we express our heartfelt thanks to Dr. P.C. Gain for such an enlightening and then soul-stirring talk. Many of the things which we never heard about it, so he pointed out. I'm so thankful to that, sir. And also, yeah, as my uh, colleague mentioned, Dr. Mina, for what a wonderful moderation. Friends, our question for next week would be, discuss the contributions of the Serampul trial towards modern education and social transformation in India. So as you all know, the world limit is 400. So it's very challenging. <laughs> and uh, our next lecture will be on Swami Vivekananda by Swami Dayat Mananda. So we look forward to meet you all next Thursday at 6 p.m. Thank you so much. <laughs>